My typical day at my laboratory is that I walk into the 200 Boston Avenue uh, facility, I take the elevator up to the fourth floor, and I scan my ID to get into uh, this suite. There's a lot of collaboration, there's a lot of room for uh, independent aspects of your research. So it really changes day to day, but it's a great experience because that allows for you to be familiar with the dynamic environment of research. Hello, my name is Jamie Miguel Fondesella. I am a senior at Tufts University where I'm majoring in biology with a focus on developmental and computational biology. Prior to coming to Tufts, I was immediately living in a rural uh, town in Pennsylvania. But I came in knowing that I had an interest in biology and that was just from my studies in high school. And so that was something I definitely wanted to explore at Tufts. And that was actually one of the reasons why I was most interested in coming to Tufts, because I heard that their research uh, in the biology department in the biomedical science was pretty strong. I am really excited because currently I'm looking at the uh, different cues that are underlying tissue remodeling. So specifically we're looking at the mechanisms that are underlying craniofacial remodeling. And so why I think that's so exciting is because currently uh, craniofacial defects are affecting nearly one in every 750 human births on an annual basis. And so it is challenging because with these defects there's no cure currently, there's no treatment. And any treatments that do exist are expensive or really invasive surgeries. The most common defects, uh, craniofacial defects in humans, occur at birth. And so there are multiple different conditions. So that could be uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, uh, cliff palates. Our focus currently is to understand what are the limits of how these defects are developing. So again, by understanding the problem, we're able to address it more uh, holistically with different therapeutics in the future. By better understanding the uh, different mechanisms or the different cues that are underlying craniofacial modeling and this repair process that tadpoles have that we don't, perhaps that can lead to different forms of treatments or just different ideas and innovations in that aspect as we move on to the future. What I've been really grateful to have the opportunity of is to develop so many relations within our communities and to develop relations with faculty members at Tufts who share our identities as well. Um, whether that's our racial identity, our ethnic identity, gender identity, it's really been exciting to connect um, with others and to really develop that community because like I mentioned, I come from a rural community, so there was no visibility or representation for anyone who looked like me in STEM or, or in higher level education in, in any way. When I was entering Tufts, I was a first generation college student as well. And like I mentioned, it can really make approaching areas of biology, of sciences a bit intimidating. What I would say to my community members is that I personally know how challenging it is to exist. I'm really, really grateful. I think the best thing that we can do is continue to support each other and encourage each other. And that allows for us to continue empowering our community. So I know it's hard, but we got this and we will continue to succeed as we have been and as we should.